take a look at section 10.6, Formulas and Application of Geometry. So in this section, we'll learn how to rewrite formulas to solve for a different variable within the formula. Suppose, for example, that the perimeter of a triangle is known and two sides are known. Say sides A and B, and the third side C can be found by subtracting the lengths of the known sides of the perimeter. Now, this is a very mathy way to start. Like, what? What are they talking about? If we start from the very beginning, if I tell you uh, the perimeter of a triangle, you would think to yourself, okay, draw a picture, here is a triangle. I know the perimeter means all the way around. Let's say the triangle has sides A, B, and C, and it's very common for us to label a triangle with sides A, B, and C, because there's three sides, A, B, C. We know that the perimeter of the entire triangle must be side length A plus side length B plus side length C, whatever those are. Because for perimeter, we walk around the outside, A plus B plus C till we get back to our starting spot. So it makes sense that our perimeter is A plus B plus C. Well, if we know some of the parts of this, like we know the perimeter is 20 feet, now my formula becomes P for perimeter now becomes 20 because the perimeter is 20. Um, I know that A is 5 feet, so I replace A with 5. I know that B is 7 feet, so I replace B with 7. And C is the missing piece, right? So really what I know is that A is 5 and B is 7, and you know all the way around is 20. Well, we can solve for C. The perimeter is 20. 5 plus 7, add like terms, is 12. And to get C by itself, I subtract 12. C must equal 20 minus 12 is 8, right? C has to be 8 according to this restriction. If A is 5, B is 7, and the entire perimeter is 20, then it makes sense that our length for C is 8. That's basically what we're going to do in these applications of geometry. We're going to use geometric rules. Here the rule was... A perimeter of a triangle is side A plus side B plus side C. We're going to be given different pieces. Maybe we're given the, the entire dimension that we're interested in. Here it's perimeter. And then two of the smaller pieces wanting to find the third piece. Okay? Uh, but typically what we're going to do is we're just going to plug in and solve. We're going to plug in our pieces for what we know to find what we don't know. Maybe the hardest part of this section on applications of geometry is what formula do we start with? You know, maybe we didn't know that the perimeter of a triangle is side A plus side B plus side C, but now we do, all right? Or maybe we didn't know how to formulate it that way or, or how to put it on paper that way. So that's some of the stuff I'm going to show you in this section. How are we going to address these things to come to an equation that we can solve? So the first thing they want you to take a look at is how to solve for an indicated variable meaning they're going to give you some goofy formula, and we want to solve for some very specific variable. And remember, a variable is just a letter. So on problem A, I'm going to rewrite it here. It says the formula that they give, or the, the, the um, equation they give, is D equals RT. Distance equals rate times time. That's what this one is. And we want to solve for T, specifically for T, meaning we want to isolate this T. Well, to isolate a letter, we usually get the numbers on the other side, which we don't have any extra numbers here. We just have RT. And then we typically just divide by whatever's touching what we want to isolate. So we get T equals, because this gets T by itself, dividing by R to both sides, equals D over R. And you look at it and you go, you look at it and you go, oh, I don't know what that means. You don't have to know what it means. We solve for T. T equals D over R. That's what we want. Problem B gives us 5x plus 2y equals 12, and we want to solve specifically for the letter y. We want to isolate this y right here. y equals is what we want. So I'm going to move everything over. The y is on this side. All the y's are on the left side. So this has got to go to the other side. So I subtract 5x from both sides. That gets rid of it over here, and I've got 2y equals 12 minus 5x. You can't put these two together. They're not like terms. So we just rewrite it as 12 minus 5x. That's okay. Now I've got all my y's on the left, 
except I've got twice as many as I want, so I'm going to divide, because it's the opposite, and I'm going to divide everything by 2. Now there's two ways to write this answer. You can write it as y equals 12 over 2 minus 5x, or you can write it as y equals, not, oh, sorry, not, not over 5, 5x five over 2, sorry, minus 5x over 2, or you can write it as 12 minus 5x, all of it is one item divided by 2. And, you know, maybe you might prefer this. This gets this allows us to reduce a little bit. You can actually make 12 over 2 the whole number 6, so we would have y equals 6 minus 5x over 2. Still a lousy looking answer, right? It's still not, like, great looking. But maybe we just, when we divide by 2 to get y by itself, we just take everything, 12 minus 5x, put it over 2, and we're done. We have solved for y. y is, one y is by itself. All right, so it's just a practice in that old algebra idea, isolating a letter. Um, let's try a few more. Number one here says A equals LW, and we want to solve for L. I'd encourage you to hit pause and try this on your own, and then hit play after you've completed it and see if we get to the same spot. I, all my L's are on the right side. I want to get L by itself. Is there anything to move over? Well, no. The only thing going on over here is I've got multiplying times w, so I'm going to divide by w. Do the opposite. That gets l by itself. If I divide the right side by w, I better just divide the left side by w. And l equals a over w, whatever that means. This is actually the formula for area of a rectangle. Area equals length times width. Okay, And we're just doing some algebra manipulating. We're just moving things around. Number seven, or sorry, number two says minus 2a plus 4b equals 7, and we want to solve for a, so we want to isolate this a right here. Okay, so is there anything on the left hand side that's not an a that we got to move over? Yeah, the 4b. How do I move plus 4b? I subtract 4b. That gets rid of it over here, and I get minus 2a equals 7 minus 4b. The reason I'm writing it as 7 minus 4b is they're not like terms, I can't put them together. 7 minus 4b is not 3b. It's just 7 minus 4b. Now I have uh, all my a's on the left, everything else on the right. So now I'm going to divide by whatever is touching a, and that's negative 2, and that gets a by itself. So a equals 7 minus 4b over negative 2. Divide by negative 2, sorry. There you go. Okay. Ugly answer. I don't know what really this means. If I knew what b was, I could tell you what a is. That's kind of how what we're going for. You want to be able to input something for b, get a number, get a get a, a, a simplify it, and get what does a equal if b is this. All right. Um, let's do a little bit more intricate problem where we actually look at the formula for Celsius, and then uh, the Celsius or the formula for Fahrenheit. So it says the formula Celsius equals five over nine times f minus thirty two. <clears throat> is used to find temperature Celsius in degrees Celsius for a given temperature expressed in Fahrenheit. Basically what it's saying is, hey, I wonder what 40 degrees Fahrenheit is in Celsius. Well, you would put it in right here, 40 minus 32 times 5 ninths, and that gives you the Celsius temperature. What it wants us to do is right here at the end, it finally tells us what it wants. Solve C equals 5 ninths, F minus 32 for Fahrenheit, for F. We want to get F by itself. All right, so how do I do that? Well, I got some extra junk here. I can't add 32 because it's joined. It's kind of like married to the F um, right now. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I don't like fractions, and I'm going to multiply everything by 9. If I multiply everything by 9, then I get 9 times C is 9C. This 9 and this 9 go away. Keep that equal sign. And I get 5, because it's not 5 ninths anymore. Parentheses F minus 32. Now I don't have fractions, which I think was the really big hiccup at first. Now I don't have fractions. Now I can go ahead and distribute the 5, right? So 9C equals 5F. And 5 times minus 32. Go ahead and get your calculators out. Let's see. 5 times... Negative 32 is negative 160. All right. 
So now I've got my 5F here. I've got some extra stuff on the right. I'm going to move it over by adding 160. So I got 9C plus 160 equals 5F. And now I've got all my Fs on the right. That's what I'm solving for is my F. So I just divide everything by 5. And we get 9C plus 160 divided by 5 equals F. And what, the, what we just did here was we just found out, hey, if I want to know what 10 degrees Celsius is, I can plug it in right here and get my Fahrenheit degree. If you put 10 in there, you get your Fahrenheit degree. Okay. Um, let's try again, uh, or try another one where we have some kind of indicated variable. We got y equals 1 3rd x minus 7 for x. So this looks very similar to the one that we just did. So maybe you want to hit pause right here and give it a shot looking at that, looking at the progression that we made on our Celsius to Fahrenheit. This is very similar, okay? But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going, but you pause it and try it and then hit play when you're ready. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I don't like fractions because I can't quite, the x is married to the minus 7 through parentheses, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to multiply everything times 3 to get rid of fractions, my left side and my right side by 3. 3 times y is 3y. 3 times 1 third goes away. Keep that equal sign. Don't let it disappear. And I get x minus 7. Sure, it's in parentheses, but I don't need parentheses because this cancels to 1. I don't need the parentheses. So now I've got my x on the right side here. The minus 7 better get to the other side by adding it. And that gets x by itself. I add 7. 3y plus 7. There's no like term there. So 3y plus 7 is what I write. I don't have to divide at the end because there's a, one, a positive 1 already touching x. And that's what I want. x equals 3y plus 7. Okay, so now let's finally kind of, now that we see that, hey, isolating a, a variable is just, you know, we're doing just some regular algebraic skills to isolate a variable. Uh, let's attach it to a geometry application, this time involved, this one involving perimeter. So it says the length of a rectangular lot is one meter less than twice the width. The length of a rectangular lot is one meter less than twice the width. The perimeter is 190 meters. Find the length and a width. So if we go back to like 10.54, we have these problem solving skills, okay? And one of them was and understand the problem. So I've already read the problem twice just to try to understand it. And my understanding is we're gonna deal with a rectangle. So another step in there was draw a picture. So I'm gonna draw a picture. I'm gonna draw it with a length and a width, okay? We have a length and a width. The length up here is the same as this length. The width over here is the same as this width. And I know that the perimeter is the same as this plus this plus this plus this, right? Now I've got to deal with the idea that the length of the rectangle is one meter less than twice the width, okay? So the width I'm going to call uh, W. I'm going to keep it as W because the length is going to be determined by the width. How do I know that? Because it says the length is one meter less than twice the width. So the length is going to be one meter less than twice the width. Does that make sense? I just said my width is w. That means my length is twice w minus one. So I'm not going to use the length as the length anymore. I'm going to say the length is 2w minus 1. Okay. Now my perimeter is this plus this. Let's, let's go ahead and walk around. It's w plus 2w minus 1 plus this length, which is also w, plus another 2w minus 1. So let's go ahead and clean this up. Our perimeter equals w plus 2w plus w plus 2w. So that's 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 1 is 4, plus 2 is 6w. And we have minus 1, minus 1, so that is minus 2. 
I know that my perimeter is 190. So I'm going to make 190, my perimeter answer, equals 6w minus 2. And I'm going to go ahead and solve for w. Plus 2, plus 2. And I get 192 equals 6w. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 6. And this is going to solve for my width. So I take 192 divided by 6, and I get 32. So it asks me, go ahead and find your length and your width. Well, your width is 32, and that's 32 meters. What's your length here? Well, we've already decided that our length is 2w minus 1. So I'm going to take 2 times, I'm going to plug in my width of 32 minus 1. And 2 times 32 minus 1, 2 times 32 is 64, minus 1 is 63. So feel, I know I go quick here. Feel free to pause it and rewind it. Uh, think through it as you need to. But again, I don't record dead space on my videos, so it always seems like I'm going quickly, and I am. I wouldn't go this quickly if I was teaching in front of you. But, you know, go back, pause it, think it through. What is he doing? Start again. Watch it twice if you need to, but pick up on these things. It's in there. I've, I've given you all the, all the information. You just got to, it, it's just quick. So go back and, and watch it again to retain it, okay? So it catches on. Um, in geometry, we have uh, angles. Two angles are complementary. Two angles are supplementary, okay? The measures of the angles in the triangle, right? So there's some old geometry rules that we need to recall. So complementary is if the sum of their angles add up to 90, meaning if I have this right angle, you know, and I have angle A here and angle B, I would say that A plus B equals 90. They're complementary. Remember this kind of squaring off inside the angle tells us that it's 90 degrees of right angle, okay? Here, angle A plus angle B adds up to 90. They're complementary. Supplementary if their angle adds up to 180. So supplementary, I have angle A, I have angle B. Angle A plus angle B adds up to 180. That's how we're going to use this. Okay. The sum of the measures of the angles in a triangle is 180. If I have angles A, B, and C, A plus B plus C add up to 180. And the measures of vertical angles are equal, meaning if I have two angles that intersect, this angle A has the exact same measure as the angle on the other side of it. These are called vertical angles. These angles are the same, and in fact, angle B here is the same as angle B here. Okay, so when they share that on the other side kind of thing, where you can go straight through the angle, those angles are equal. A equals A. B equals B in there in terms of their angle measurement, okay? All right, let's use some of these things to solve some interesting problems. So two complementary angles are drawn such that one angle is four degrees more than seven times the other angle. So first thing, complementary angles. Two complementary angles, that tells me, you know, I have this right, and I know a picture is provided, but it tells me I have some kind of right angle here I have angle 1 and angle 2, they're going to add up to 90. One angle is 4 degrees more plus than 7 times the other. Okay, so that, me that means I have to go ahead and say the other angle must be angle A. That means that this, I'm going to define the other angle as 4 times, or sorry, 4 plus 7 times A. Here they use X, all right, but it's the same idea. Meaning we know that A plus 4 plus 7A add up to 90 degrees because they're complementary. Once I understand that they add up to 90 degrees because they're complementary, I can solve for A. I, that, then I can find the measure of each angle. Because I have A plus 4 plus 7A equals 90. A plus 7A is 8A. 4 plus 8A equals 90. Subtract the 4. And I'm going to write, rewrite this over here. So 8a equals 90 minus 4 is 86. Divide by 8. Divide by 
86 divided by 8 is 10.75. So then what's the other angle? Well, the other angle, I'm going to put 10.75 in to here. So take it times 7 and then plus 4. And we get angle. the other angle, whatever it is, is 79.25. And notice when you add those up, you do get 90 degrees. Okay? So we've got other angle A must be or 10.75 is one angle, the other angle is 79.25. All right. Again, I go fast, pause it, rewind it, watch it again, pick up on the pieces. All right. Two complementary angles are constructed. So two complementary angles are constructed so that one measures one degree less than six times the other, find the measures of the angle. So this is very similar to what we just did. I'd encourage you to pause it and try this on your own. Use the notes that we just took. See if you can come up with, uh, come up with the correct solution. So complementary angles means two angles add up to 90 degrees. So it's going to be something like this. Uh, one degree less than six times the other. So I'm going to let this be angle x, the other one would be 6 times uh, x, and then 1 less than 6 times x. So 1 less than 6 times x. I know that x plus 6x minus 1, if I take this angle plus this angle, it adds up to 90 degrees. That's the point of the complementary angles. So I have x plus 6x is 7x minus 1 equals 90. I'm going to add 1 to both sides. 7x equals 91 x must be, i got to divide by 7, 91 divided by 7 is 13. So then the other angle, I would plug 13 in. So this angle is 13. So then I have to plug in 13 here. 6 times 13 minus 1 is 77. So we get 13 degrees and 77 degrees. Notice they add up to the... 90 degree complementary angles. All right, uh, good stuff. Let me know if you have any questions. Practice these, rewatch this as many times as you need to.